We are here today to talk about vocabulary and what it's going to be like. So vocabulary is one of my favorite items in ELA. And let me tell you why it is for English. There's a bunch of words, right? Tons of them, thousands of English words. And with, with, with vocabulary, unfortunately, there's multiple meanings, multiple meanings of vocabulary. So whenever we're reading a passage and we come to a word we do not understand, or if it's you're testing and you don't understand what the one of the words are asking you, or maybe one of the answer choices has a word in it that you don't understand, this class is for you because I'm going to help you understand words in English and understand that they have multiple meanings and how you will use those in your reading with your reading skills and understand what you're reading because we cannot make those A's if we skip over a word we do not understand. We have to break that word down and understand what it's asking. So a little bit about me. I'm Mrs. Combs. This is a terrible picture of me. I, I need to get that changed. I normally don't wear the glasses. I usually look like this, but with some mascara on, I don't have any makeup on. And I'm having allergy issues with my eyes, so I'm wearing my glasses today, okay? So I am uh, a teacher. I'm experienced. I'm certified with the state of Texas, and I have taught for over two decades. Uh, that's a long time, by the way. And I've been, uh, my, I have been recognized uh, as a campus teacher of the year in Fort Bend ISD, which is a, a, a public school district in Texas, in case you're from somewhere else. And I'm on my seventh year. I need to update this. It says six year here as an English teacher at a prestigious private school in Sugarland. And it says here that I bring a wealth of knowledge and dedication to my role. And I do. Most people my age in teaching are already retired. They're living the good life, right? I don't want to retire. I want to be with kids all the time because you guys are awesome. So I went ahead and start keep learning, right? So I'm certified in AI as an AI trainer. And what I've done is I've passed so many certifications to train people in AI. So I understand the process of AI. In addition, uh, I'm also certified in Texas as a teacher. And I've taught and I always tutor IC English subjects. So what that means is, I see means this, you take a test if you want to go into a private school, they have the entrance exams, and I help people pass those with flying colors. And they do get usually always admitted into their school of choice for private schools. In addition, I hold a bachelor's degree right here in the universe at from the University of Houston, and I did graduate with honors. That's what I want you all to do, and you will. And I'm also, again, certified as a teacher here in Texas. I have, um, I'm have i certified to teach four through eight. I'm also certified to teach gifted and talent in special education. So I do have a commitment to learning. I'm a lifelong learner, and I'm also a member of what's called the Texas Association of Gifted and Talented and the National Council of Teachers of English. So I do a lot of professional development to get better and better at teaching. On a personal note, I am originally from West Virginia. I grew up there and I was born there. And I also is, have been a resident of Sugarland, Texas for 30 years. I have a really huge diverse background working with different children. I work with a lot of ESL students, the students who have a hard time maybe coming from another country and they don't know English. So, if, you know, I know how to work with those students and help them understand. So I have a huge amount of experience in teaching and I like to shape different per perspectives and approaches in education. And we have fun in my class. We do learn a lot, but we also play a lot of games and you'll, but they're educational games, and they just reinforce what I teach in the class, okay? Any questions about me?
And again, you don't have to speak. You can always just send me a little chat directly to me and I can answer your questions. Okay. So just anytime you want to ask me a question, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Here's what we're going to be learning. Again, a lot of information when it comes to studying words in the English language. So in vocabulary, I'm just going to read it right here off the screen. If you don't mind, I will add a few things in. But in vocabulary word study class, what we do is we embark on engaging a journey. And it is a journey. It's not just a worksheet every week, do it and goodbye. It's not. It's a journey. We work together. I help to expand your lexicon and that's speaking and deepen your understanding of the language. Because if we don't know the words that we're reading, it's hard to answer questions on a test. It's hard for that, right? So we work together on a various interactive lessons and exercises. And we, we figure out words and their meaning and uses in context. And that means use in a reading passage or maybe a question on a test. We know the answer to the test, right? But if you do a multiple, multiple um, choice exam, what happens is sometimes the teacher will put some words in there that you've never seen before, and you may not get that question right. That's happened to a lot of students. They know the answer to the question, but when they read the answer choices, it's not there, their answer. So what I do is I teach you what those words could be, and maybe the next time you test, you'll get that answer right. Because there's a lot of different nouns in word study in English vocabulary, a lot of verbs, adjectives, adverbs. So when you read that question, you need to answer, you need to ask yourself, how is this word that I'm reading applied to what I'm reading? Okay, and I'll help you get there. So what we'd like to do is a lot of strategies. So I like to work root words, prefixes, suffixes. And what I do is I help you kind of decipher that unfamiliar word to where you will be able to figure it out, at least figure out some of the components of the word to where you can get your answers right. And when you read, you understand what it is. Um, I do emphasize a rich and diverse vocabulary. Okay, so what you'll be seeing is this. You'll be seeing some words that you'll be seeing in school this year. You'll be seeing some words that you're going to see in maybe another grade level higher. So the words will be higher critical thinking words. OK, and that's pretty cool because whenever we play our games, you don't even realize, hey, I'm doing ninth grade work right now. And you might be in sixth grade uh, you know, class right now. So what I do is I implement things and make it like real world tasks, apl application. So when we're learning these words, I like to hear your connection with that word. So I may ask you and I will to write a sentence with the word that we're learning. And I want that sentence to be applied to what you know now, right? That's how we learn vocabulary. If you don't apply it to real world everyday living, then you're not going to remember that word the next time you see it. And that's what happens in school. Whenever you are at school, your teacher is so busy trying to teach you reading skills, writing skills, grammar. And a lot of times in ELA, they don't get to a lot of Word study, right? And word study is important. Vocabulary is important. Because if you don't have those skills to understand what word it is, you're going to probably skip over the word when you're reading. You're like, what the heck is that? And you're just going to skip over it. I used to do that when I read in school. If I didn't know the word, I'd try to figure it out. You know, we use context clues, right? Whenever you're reading, you don't know what a word is. But sometimes that doesn't always work. So 
That's what the class is all about. I'm going to broaden your vocabulary arsenal. So the next test you have, the next uh, entrance exam you have, whenever you start filling, take your PSA, uh, PSAT, uh, you know, to get ready for, for high school and college and all of that, you're going to under, you're going to have a deeper appreciation for those words and a beauty, you'll understand them and you'll have a beauty and a power. You'll be empowered with language. And that is hard to get whenever you have a class with a lot of students in it, which you probably go to school and have students that are loud, disruptive, and it's hard to learn those techniques. So that's where momentum learning comes in. I love momentum learning because what they do and what I do with you as my student is I'm not going to let you go to school the next day because these, these classes are on Sunday. And if you don't understand that concept or that word, then I'm going to work with you, right? I mean, I've even stayed in class after class whenever everybody hangs up from the class and we work on strategies. So I just want you to know that I'm not just going to see you on Sundays, but I will make sure to stay in touch with you if you need help during the week. If your teacher assigns you something and you need help, you can always text me. I'm not text. Email. Email me. So I have two classes of this. I teach two classes. It's offered in an A, two semesters. There's an A semester and a B semester. And what you'll do is you'll sign, if you're interested in my class, you'll sign up. It's going to be small group. I never have, I've never had eight students. It's usually less than that. And it's offered on Zoom. So we have one-on-one -on -one time together. And it may be in a class setting, but some students, like I said, stay after and I work with them. Okay. We will have homework. And you're like, oh, no, I don't want homework. Well, I know you're busy, okay? I know you are, you know, in middle school, so you're probably maybe in orchestra or maybe band or maybe uh, sports this year, right? So I know you get busy. I get it. So if, all you have to do is tell me, Mrs. Coombs, I did not have time to do the homework this week. So what I do is this. We go over the homework. We talk about it. I give you the answers, but then hopefully you'll have time the next week to do it, okay? Any questions about any of this, about the class description? I am going to give you a scenario of a class. Like if you would sign up, you would have me as your teacher, and then I'll give you what we do. It'll be like a free class, okay? We're going to get to that. I just want to get through all the semantics here of what I, who I am, what the class entails. And if you have any questions, you can just ask me. All right. So the class is pretty cool because it's one of what's called a Canvas platform. So we use Canvas to share with you electronically homework, any recordings. Let's say that you have that band concert or that orchestra or piano concert, or maybe you have some sport on Sunday and you miss the class. It's okay. Because what happens is I'm recorded every week. So you can just turn me on anytime you want and watch me and you'll have the materials because it'll be on this canvas for you. Now, you may have to print the materials sometimes, but you'll still have access to it. As a matter of fact, the recording sessions, I'm right now reading this if you want to follow along. The recording sessions, they remain for you as a class member, accessible for an additional three months after the conclusion of the class, right? So you'll have your Canvas uh, sign-in and you can watch me again. Let's say your teacher tells you uh, maybe you're having a vocab test and you probably, you'll probably learn these, by the way, in my class before you do in your regular school class. But let's say you didn't understand your teacher at school. You can just watch me again, or you can get access to the homework answers or something on Canvas that will help you. We want you to make sure you understand it right. 
We don't want you to go away questioning. We want you to understand it. And I will help you get there. Okay. Now, what let's say you're you might be starting school soon, or maybe you already have, you already have a lot of homework, you already have a lot of things. Well, don't you won't forget about the class because Canvas invites you to the class, okay, about four or five days before the start date. Okay, that's here. I'm losing my voice, so hold on one second. I'm sorry. There, my iced tea always helps out. So your homework, you'll have a whole week to do it, okay? So uh, you'll have homework, you submit it on time, and then it, sometimes it automatically grades it. But I like to go over it with you, right? We want to make sure, I want to make sure you understand it. So I, I will go over it with you every week. So we do our classes on Zoom, just like you have now. You're on Zoom, and it's pretty easy. What I love about it is if you're shy, you can go down to the bottom, or maybe it's the top on your screen, and you can just send me a little message. Like, maybe you're having trouble hearing me. Well, I'm not going to know that unless you say something, right? So you would just either tell me on the chat or unmute and tell me, okay? So Canvas platform is really user friendly. I don't know if you're, you may be used to Schoology at school or maybe Alma. We have different platforms at my uh, private school I teach at. But on Canvas, I had to learn it myself when I started working with Momentum. And I was like, oh, no, another platform. Guess what? It's really easy to use. And I love it. I love it. I prefer it now better than the other ones we use at school. So it's really nice. Uh, and now I'm going to pretend that you're in my class or you're signing on to my class. OK, so I would greet you. So what I would do is say your name and there's a name. I don't know if you know this, but like right here where it says where it shows my picture, it says momentum learning for you. You have a name there and I can't read. Um, I'm not sure what this is here, but I can't read it. But I see Oliver's name, right? So I would say, welcome, Oliver. Eventually, I'll get to know all your names, right? So we get in, and the kids, they love to tell me what happened at school during the week, which is really fun. And then I'll tell you what happened with me, and then we get right into the lesson. So the Canvas platform is easy because what I do is I will add our handouts all the information we're going to go through that week, okay? Or I'm not week, or that class. Sometimes you will have to print it out, but that's okay. And then we'll go over, I'll go over everything. We'll learn so many ways to learn English, learn vocabulary. And then what I do is we'll go over the questions. You'll get to try some. I try some. I mo model and go over it with you how I'm figuring out that word. And then we'll ha you'll have a list of vocabulary words. And, and then you'll have a lot of little exercises to work with that. We work online and we work homework independently also during the week. And so I'll drop the homework down here. And you just come the next week and then we go over that homework. And then I do, and you're not going to like this, but you will be quizzed on this information and you're like oh no another test don't worry about it because what I do is I review it all for you we go over that homework answer any questions that you may not understand and then we play the games we play games so the kids are like well what kind of game are we going to play this week they're more interested in the game right so because they're educational games and what they do is they they kind of seal the deal for you because you're used to electronics. You're used to playing games, possibly. So those games really help you. And I develop the games. I don't develop the program of the games, but I put the game information in for platforms such as Kahoot, uh, Look It. I forget the name of the one they really like. I, I just I got to get that ready for tomorrow's class for Sunday. So what I like to do is find out what kind of games you like, okay? You might not like my games, and you're like, oh, they're boring. Well, 
tell me what you like. And I'll learn those game platforms. And I did. That's why I can't remember the name of it for the one they love to play. And it's probably the same one you like to play. But it'll come to me maybe before we hang up. But I'll go in, sign up as a teacher, develop your game for you, and we'll play those games for your quiz, okay? And then you, all my kids pass all the quizzes. It's phenomenal. It makes me feel good when I see that because I want everybody to be successful. I want you to be successful in life and not just vocabulary, right? So that's kind of fun. I also show videos. So let me uh, go ahead. Does anybody have any questions about Canvas? Okay. All right. This is the question and answer time, but I'm going to show you the video. You're going to love my videos. Let me go ahead and stop sharing because I have to bring it up on another screen. So if you can just give me a minute to bring that up. I had it up, but the class before yours was on grammar. And so I had to bring that one up and it knocked, uh, knocked off my vocabulary one. So let me show it to you. And then you can also see uh, the one that I use here in class. All right. So give me a minute. I'm sorry. This dropped off like this. And it happens online. You know that if you've ever done an online class. So, okay. So, now what I'm about to show you is eighth grade. Is that okay? I hope you like, I hope you like it. You might even know these already. Okay. So, you're going to laugh. I could show you real quick some of the resources. I don't know if you have those handouts, but I can show them to you real quick. I don't know what you have access to, so you have to let me know sometimes. Okay, so let me show you an example. Let me go back to Zoom and share with you on the share screen. And remember, you got to tell me if you can't hear me or see anything, all right? So I'm going to blow it up a little bit more here, all right? So what I love to start my games or games class out with is uh, songs. And they're usually kind of little rap songs. I know you're thinking rap. I don't listen to rap. But what it is is it helps you understand better the words, okay? And then we go over words to find. This is where you really learn how to break down words or break out words. So what I do is I'll give you a list of the words just like this, and then we define them, okay? And we define them by um, looking at the different types of words they are. So this is anarchy, anarchy. We go over the meaning. I read it to you. We go over the example. It's a sentence. Then you learn the synonyms. Let's say you don't know anarchy, but I bet you, you know what turmoil means or disorder or chaos, right? So if you know a synonym for anarchy, then that is the exact what it means. That's exactly what the term means. That's the meaning of anarchy. The true definition is a state of lawlessness, loss, lawlessness, confusion, or disorder. The crowd erupted into a state of anarchy during the concert. So what, what happens is we don't learn the exact meaning at times because you need to make a connection to the world. You might know what a word means when I say disorder or your teacher says, this is disorderly. We need to stop talking. So if that happens, you would know that that's anarchy. So whenever your teacher says, We're, you're chaotic, you're chaos, we need to stop talking right now, then you can say, you mean we're in a state of anarchy, Mrs. or Mr. such and such? So you'll start using these words in your vocabulary. But as you can see, these are the eighth grade words, but you'll see some of these and you'll be ready for eighth grade. All right. You probably knew this one, desolate. So that's an adjective. 
So you'll be learning these types of words. And then we, uh, after we go through these and make sure I make sure you understand them, you do write a sentence, by the way, using these words. Okay. So then what we'll do is fix the mistake. So I'm going to give you a list of sentences. There's not that many. There's like five, I think, or six. Well, there might be some on this one because it's eighth grade. So my grandpa, this is an example, because what you have to do is you, it's a wrong vocab word. This is the word vocabulary right here, wrangle. But that's the wrong word. So you have to apply this sentence with the correct word. And you have to understand the word, right? So my grandpa is going to wrangle on a trip to Italy, Greece, and Spain after he renews his passport and completes his foreign language classes. So you're like, that's wrong. I got to figure out which word it is. So here's your word bank. I don't ever give you anything without a word bank. And then if you still don't understand what it is, you would you have the list of words and their meanings, right? So wrangle means that uh, it means to dispute or fight or brawl. So it's arguing, disputing. It's a verb. So you know that's not right. You know grandpa is not going to uh, fight on a trip to Italy, right? So you would go up here if you don't know what the word means. You would find the answer, what is happening, what is going on with Grandpa, and then you would fi figure out what the word is. I don't have time to go through these and look at them right now, but you would write down the word here on the on well, as we're going through the lesson. You would write it down right here, okay? Now, are there any questions about anything like this? We do have a lot more to uh, go through and apply our new words like this one. You would have two of the vocabulary words. You would choose one, the correct one, by the way. And you're supposed to rewrite the sentence, but I really don't make you do that. I just have you circle the one you know is correct. And then we draw relationships because all words have relationships, right? That's why we learn the synonyms of them to understand and make that connection. And you learn antonyms at times. Then, oh no, yes, you have to read a little passage every week in my class because you're going to apply your words that you just learned. And then I break down the word and we, this is the fun part down here. You get to think cre creative. You are very creative with these words. So you'll do that. And then I break down some of the words for you. I'll give you an example. Tell me if I'm going over uh, that time because sometimes I get started and and do that. So here's panorama. Okay. It comes from the Greek word pan. And that means all. Okay. And if you have a cell phone, you know, you can take a picture, right? And you have all those different kinds of ways to take a picture. Usually it'll say on there video portrait or panoram pano or panoramic, right? And that's where we get that word from, or portrait. Pa pano, pan means all. And oramic, see where it says oramic here after pam? That means to see. So panoram me allows you to see all. So the prefix pan is used in large words such as panica, a medicine that cures everything, and also to indicate that all things are included. So the airline, there used to be an airline. Your grandma and grandpa would know about this airline, but they don't have it anymore. It went out of business, but it used to be called Pan Am, okay? And it's short for Pan America, and they usually fly all over America. And how do they get that? Because Pan, the root word, means all, okay? So that's why this company, unfortunately, went out of business. I don't know why, because that's pretty good that they did that using the root word pan in theirs. But they fly all over America. Okay, and there's Pantheon, uh, Pantheon in Rome, and that's a temple for the gods, all right. 
And then anyway, it's really cool. And then we go over other words too and break them down in this section of the lesson. Then we play our fun games, okay? I get you ready for the quiz. Are there any questions about my class? I hope you take me because I enjoy it and it's fun. And like I said, and if you don't get me on a Sunday and you have something to do, like your grandma comes over or maybe somebody wants to go take you to a pool party or something and you don't want to come to my class, you can always, I have a lot of kids that like to travel too. So what they did all summer when I taught is they just watched the video and then they did their homework and I went over it with them on the video, right? So that's what's cool about momentum learning. So if you all have any questions for me, please talk to me or send me a chat. And if if not, I'm not sure when I'm supposed to get off here. So let me, uh, do you mind if I look real quick? I can just look on my phone. I have it on my phone here too. If I need to keep going, I will. Okay, it's 115. So what time is, it? oh, I've got some time, yay. I've got some time. So now I'll go over anything else on here. This is just one example of what we do, right? We do other things. Oh, I forgot to show you the video. So let me show you that. Hold on, let me get back to it. I had to unshare here. To, sometimes whenever I go back and try to bring something up, another thing will pop up. So let me bring it. Oh, it's making me sign on again. So let me sign on again. Okay, so let me show you the video. I don't know if you're going to like the video. It's kind of loud. So if it's too loud, let me know. Okay, let me know and I will somehow turn it down. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Share. Now, now, like I said, the song is kind of rap because let's face it, you guys, you know, you're at that age where you like that kind of music. Maybe you don't, but if you do, you're going to see it here. All right, you ready? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. See, I told you it was loud. Hey, y'all, tragic. What up, B? Hey, y'all, tragic. What up, B? So you're going to, it's eventually going to get to the words, but it's kind of, see how it's making a connection right now with you? We all text, right? I got to make the great escape. Word. I got to make the great escape. Word. Hey, yo, tragic. What up, B? Okay, let me get through all that. It's just going to go on. Okay, here we go. Now it's using the words that we're learning or we will learn. As you can see, the words are in a different color of font. So you're going to see it's giving you embark and what it means. In the clock and it's time to embark and set off on my travels, so though it's still dark. It's just me in the house because my dad's not around and my mom's got to work at the hospital now. Hi, but that's okay. I fend for myself, protect myself, my health, and my friends. And uh, vice versa, they got my back too. Stay close like skin stays to a tattoo. I move fast on the map like a cat. Now what happens is sometimes students say, Mrs. Combs, it's going really fast. So I will slow it down for you. But you have to tell me these things, right? So now I've slowed it down. Dodging trouble through broken buildings and all that rubble with more rats. Then the movie rats at Tui, the streets seem the rats, you hearing that? And while they buy and fight for some forgotten cheese, the biggest rat always eyeing me. I ran off to school, it's a great escape. And cut through the gangs like a razor blade. So this gives you, and I can even go slower. The kids hate it when I do this, but sometimes I have to, right? I have to go slower because maybe the video is just too fast because I want them to see the word. You know, we all learn differently, right? Some of us learn by auditorily, just listen and you get it. Some of us listen, can listen, but verbally speak it or maybe visually see it. That's why I love the videos. That home, I can't even get now, the time the slowest. Day, but my friends are excited, they never blase. There's they the word. Creepy. It's quite a reception. Call me creamy ranch. And then I'll go back to the original. Okay, there we go, there's that. 
Okay, then it goes again and tells you about that, you know, they're talking and then they use it again. There's the wrangle as you learn. See how it implements it into the story or the video you're watching? Okay. Some people don't like the video. So if you don't like it, I don't have to do it for your class. You just let me know. But that handout, I don't know if you noticed, it did have the song written down. So I always put the song lyrics in each lesson also. All right. Are there any questions that you may have for me? Let me know. Just unmute and talk to me. I love to talk to you all. We got two minutes. Yay. Oh, you don't have anything, Oliver? Okay. Oliver's so sweet. He sent me a chat. Thank you, Oliver. Okay. Uh, is there anything else I can show you again, like the, the PowerPoint or anything? Or maybe the lesson? Would that help? Just let me know. Just send me a chat. Or you can unmute and talk to me. I love that, too. Okay. Well, if there's not, I'm going to say goodbye to you all. And I hope to see you in my class. You all have a good afternoon. It's really hot here in Houston, so don't go outside. Bye. Thank you for coming.